Radiant Team Bang. Okay, so welcome back, everybody. You're watching the Premier League season four, uh, season three, rather, not season four. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but this is Team Dignitas on the dial. They will be playing against No Tide Hunter on the Radiant side. See, Loder has managed to screw up his tags. Fantastic. Anyway, as we can see, that is in fact Loder playing there. Also, if you are confused as to who this is, this is way too sexy. Masquerading as the Jonas Brothers. However, bands coming straight up. We do have the Batrider band out first, along with Darkseer being banned up by No Tide Hunter. Now the question is, are they going to get their hands on the Sven pick? We've seen them use a lot of Sven, as well as, of course, will Admiral Bulldog get his signature hero, the Scylla Bear, or will it get banned out by Dignitas? We will see in just a moment. Now, No Tide Hunter, they do have the first pick, so they want to go for something like that Sven Wiz combo. They do have the opportunity, but we'll see what Dignitas have up their sleeve. Should mention that all three games we played on US East. Dignitas and No Tide Hunter have agreed to playing on the USC servers tonight. Reserve Normally, it's uh, the Radiant side is the home side, so look at the servers first, and then we flip for the second one. Well, we go to the opposite server for game number two, and then we coin flip for the third game. However, this one round... Oh, hang on a minute. No Tide Hunter have actually banned out the Sven, so they've decided that they don't want to use it. And, of course, we'll talk to Envy a couple of times. He is fairly insightful when it comes to this. Now, I should mention that these two teams have met... In the last 10 days, they played in the JD Masters. Now, Dignitas were the victors in that scenario. I should mention it's the only game that I've got on record for them Ten at the moment. Remaining. So we'll see how they do tonight, but I would say just based on that, I suppose Five that Dignitas seconds. are going to be considered the favourite, as well as the fact that they do have a slight advantage on the servers as well. Ah. And the, oh, there we go. There's the respect band there for Admiral Bulldog having that Syllabair band out. We'll see if he gets in. We'll see what else they decide to put in, whether or not he'll play that Fury on. Once again, no tight under though, with the first pick now. What are they going to go with? Of course, we've got plenty of really nasty heroes Templar on the board, and it's a Templar Assassin first pick. Of course, she's extremely popular in this metagame. She's one of those heroes who can hit hard really early. Doesn't do so well if she has... She's, I would say she's very, very level dependent. She really needs to get rolling early on, otherwise she can struggle somewhat. But... At the very least, she can participate. With a big range on her slow, at the very least, she can try and help at a distance. But unfortunately, she's somewhat like the Invoker. If you don't get her... If you get a lot of pressure on her, let's say you have like a Chen jump out of Chen or Enchantress jump out of the jungle at 2 to 4 minute mark and start beating down on a, against a weak lane, start chewing up towers, she can't really rotate to help them out. That is a bit of an issue. Whereas if you had something like, like a Lashrax or the mid, we've seen that way, way long ago in the past. But if you have a hero like that, if a lane comes under pressure, he can teleport and help out. Whereas a Templar Assassin really can't afford to rotate at all. She needs to sit down and get a level 6 because without that slow, she really doesn't have a whole lot to offer in a counter gank scenario, whereas if you throw in a hero with a stun, he can just go teleport over and then go and counter gank, get a couple of kills, that sort of thing, and just get the ball rolling. Whereas if you're up against something like a TR Invoker, you really know that you've got the license to kill, and the enemy team will have a lot of trouble rotating help around. However, Digitaz, they decide to open up with Undying, as well as an early Shadow Shaman pick. Don't normally see him picked up this early on. Generally speaking, he's a fourth or fifth pick, doesn't really get picked up all too often in the first series. How about Dignitas that's just decided they want that? So they're going to have some really good early team fight control between the Tombstone as well as the Serpent Wars and, of course, Shadow Shaman's Disables. That's going to cause some pretty brutal damage alone with just those two heroes. But now we also have the double pick here for No Titan. To what are they going to go with? And, of course, that ever, ever present Wisp also available. Dignitas, though, they seem to have the stronger team. Well, they have a fairly strong team fight combination so far. So we might not see them break up too much. And that's one of the things that Wisp and uh, a Wisp combo is really good at picking off. Anybody who tries to split push, cause some trouble around the map. It's very easy to knock them down. But it looks like our No Tide Hunter are going to go with a very gank oriented line. Of course, the Bounty Hunter. There's their Suicide Solo. Or, in the past, we have actually seen S4 play that as a solo mid, but I kind of doubt that. And we talked to Envy about the solo mid Bounty Hunter. He said it, for it to work, you either need to be up against a, not, uh, against a mid who's not that strong. Or you need to be able to pull him that early poor man's shield plus extra regeneration. But in this case, Templar Assassin is a very strong solid mid. And we've seen S4 play that in the past at a very, very high level. So we'll see how it goes. And yes, Arg, you are correct. These guys played each other 10 days ago in the JD Masters. Now the third pick here for Dignitas. Now they've got... Well, I'm dying. Could be... 
We'll see where Undyne goes. We've seen him used as trial lane support where he just pulls and uh, sometimes helps out. Other times we've seen him go into offensive trial lanes and be the primary farmer. And of course, the more heroes you stack in around that tombstone early on, the harder Stone it is to deal with. He's alive. also pretty good in a defensive trial lane. Of course, you throw it in the tombstone, people sort of run into range of that. It's pretty much Undying throws down the tombstone, you have to break off your gank or really risk losing a couple of heroes. Because if you fight on that for a few seconds, the zombies start piling up. And at low levels, that is utterly crippling. However, Storm Spirit is the third pick. The Dignitas, an interesting choice. We don't get to see a lot of Storm Spirit, to be honest, and we'll see how he does in this situation. And against this lineup, this is not a bad lineup for him because right now they don't have any really good lockdown stuns, like any really powerful power stuns right now. They've got Keeper Light with Mana Leap. Sure, that's going to be annoying for Storm Spirit, rather mana dependent, but at the very least, he can still leap away. We've also, of course, got Bounty Hunter there, no stun. Templar Assassin's only got a slow. So against this lineup at the moment, Storm Spirit's going to be fairly hard for them to pin down. The question is whether or not did no Tide Hunter have a good couple of power stuns in mind to pick for the next. This might actually throw off their picks. We'll see what they have up their sleeve next. But right now it looks like they're looking for a primary farmer as well as another support. Potentially a jungler. But I get the feeling Keeper Light is going to spend most of his time pulling and using uh, his Illuminate every now and then harass the lane. But I think they're going to be looking for another primary support, probably in the form of something like Jakiro. Although in this situation, we're probably going to see Jakiro possibly banned out here as we are going to the second series ban. Fury on being banned out. By no time, it looks like they're wary of the split push harassment there. And of course, between Storm Spirit, Shadow Shaman, and a fourth hero, they could cause a lot of pressure, especially when they're undying with four heroes. They could cause a lot of pressure early on, and have, of course, the huge firepower of wards as well as the tombstone, just making up for a lack of that fifth hero. And that fifth hero could be Fury on counter pushing at all possible moments, and just generally being a jerk and trying to just snipe towers when nobody's looking. But Rubik will be the third to ban here. And I think No Tarn are definitely looking for another support. Same for Dean and Tars. They could be looking for another support. Depending on how they're planning on playing the Undying. Shadow Shaman most likely going to be a support here. No Tide Hunter living up to their name, banning out the Tide Hunter. It looks like they want to fight under Towers early. We've had Envy tell us exactly how worried they are about fighting early on when Tide Hunter has that ravage up. It really does worry them. What game is this? This is a league, so basically teams play each other a set number of times and then. Basically, the top, I think, four or so will go forward into the Masters. To see how the current standings are, all you need to do is visit the Premier League.eu. Visit the Premier League.eu and you can see exactly how the league is progressing, as I'll show you here. So currently, we have Empire sitting on top, six wins for seven games. Dignitas, though, just behind them, five wins for six games. I'm going to say no Tide Hunter, though, they still. Three wins for six. They're looking to make it four from seven. It really depends how these games for Fnatic, Absolute Legends, and Virtus Pro go, so whether or not they can make it in the top, but we'll see. Reserve time. But continuing on here, we have the Night Stalker banned out by Dignitas, as well as the Disruptor, the final ban here for No Tide Hunter. I don't really blame them. Dignitas, they are looking for another hero. The AoE firepower of uh, Disruptor could definitely be quite nasty. It was the fact that keep it like any hero who can basically teleport or summon a hero in or even teleport a hero away, can quite easily get countered by the Disruptor. Of course, with Glimpse just sending them back to where they came from. It is definitely frustrating stuff to play against. However, in this situation, it will be banned out. And definitely annoying stuff. But I've got to say, no Tide Hunter will probably want some kind of hard disable, because otherwise, that or they're going to need some... No, they're going to have to get some Sheep Sticks fairly on, because otherwise, Storm Spirit is going to be close to unstoppable. Just being able to leap around the fight. And if you give Storm Spirit a bit of farm and then a lot of maneuver and let it, then a lot of room to move in a fight, that's really asking for some serious trouble there. As we see Night Stalker also banned out here, of course, he does have a very crippling silence. That's the other thing, of course, that shuts down a Storm Spirit. Silences. Bounty Hunter. I mean, if they really want an orchid, I suppose Bounty Hunter can try and build into one, although I kind of doubt he'll go for it. Just because against that lineup, he will still want to get that BKB up and running. Otherwise, he risks, runs the risk of getting shut down by Shadow Shaman. And Wisp we picked up. There we go. They were looking for a Wisp. And this is definitely a reason to ban that Disruptor. Now, I've had Chaos Knight also banned up. But Dignitas has, of course, great stun there. And it seems like it was a good plan because, of course, they picked up the Wisp. Now, Tiny could be the next one. Next hero on their cards to grab. Of course, Tiny and Wisp, pretty much the other, uh, the other hero to go with them. Along with Sven, we've seen exactly how brutal Sven and Wisp can be together as well. However, Sven, of course, banned out early by no Tide Hunter. Dignitas, on the other hand, they have a couple of picks here, and they could, I suppose, they could potentially try and work a Tiny if they threw Undying into a solo lane and then ran an aggressive trial lane there with Shadow Shaman, Tiny, and another hero. That was definitely a possibility if Storm Spirit takes a mid. 
but we'll see what they've got in mind. Just waiting on the fourth pick here from Dignitas. They are really going through their time here. In fact, down to ten seconds. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, definitely going to cut that fine. And there we go. Jakiro being picked up. Now, this could be an offensive try. And Undying Shadow Shaman Jakiro, definitely a possibility. Stormsbury could take the mid, and then they could have any, well, pretty much an assortment of heroes could take that safe lane quite easily. Of course, anything from a Queen of Pain, Clinks, Windrunner, you name it, plenty of heroes left on the board that they could go with. Of course, they could also, I mean, this could also be dual lanes. I mean, they could just go, you know what, send something like Jakiro on dying mid. Work with that, or even just go with it. Storm Spirit and Shikiro could go mid if they really wanted to. And Shikiro plus another hero mid would quite easily shut down Temple of Assassin, really make her time in the mid quite an annoying stint. As, of course, we've often seen the Chaos Knight and Shikiro work together as a dual mid against Temple of Assassin, very efficient in shutting it down. Of course, that does mean you're allowing them the lane to farm, but that said, it's going to come down to who they decide to partner up with the Wisp. And this is probably going to be. What, this last pick here is probably what they're going to send with Wisp. Now, it could be Tiny. Only a possibility. I mean, Tiny Wisp can keep it light. Definitely a crazy powerful offensive trial. Again, they could also be planning to send their own offensive trial up there. Got a good couple of stuns there. Of course, you throw Wisp in. We've seen exactly how annoying the combo is. Wisp tethers up. Like, Tiny tosses a Wisp in. Gets a stun down straight away. And then you... Okay, it's going to be a Lashrak. Unexpected somewhat, but we'll see exactly how this one goes. Of course, not as efficient in terms of combo as a tiny but you know what we'll see how it works out with that in this situation I get the feeling that Lashrac will be the primary farmer in fact we haven't seen a semi-carry Lashrac in quite some time I don't think we've seen a semi-carry Lashrac in the TPL at all if memory serves me correctly so we'll see what no tiny hunter can pull off here but now the and final pick for Dignitas I believe they're looking for some kind of solo hero here preferably one that can seconds, preferably right? one that can possibly take a suicide solo or a hard solo lane if necessary, but down to about five seconds here to pick. And there we go, it will be the Queen of Pain. I get the feeling though this may be a safe lane Queen of Pain with Shadow Shaman Undying and Jakiro working together. Or they could be planning on just Jakiro and Undying working together and then Shadow Shaman backing up the Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain will mostly look after herself, but Shadow Shaman will focus on the pull in the jungle, getting his levels in farm from that, and giving Queen of Pain effectively a solo lane. Now that is to say, if they can get Undying and Jakiro to handle themselves in their own lane, but I mean, looking at Wisp, Lashrak, and Cube, like that feels to me like they could be sending that to a fence in which case they might want to send Queen of Pain and rotate her towards the suicide lane. But we'll see what they've got. Up their sleeve in a moment, as I should just remember to do this. There we go. Goodbye, overlay. Remember to get rid of it. Ten seconds remaining. Apparently, no tide hunter are taking their time figuring out who's going to be playing Five what. No remaining. requests there for. Okay, no requests there for a remake, so we're good there. As apparently someone's gone to the toilet or something. Anyway, let's call out these players here. So playing for. The dire side on Dignitas, we have way too sexy playing the Queen of Pain, app name there. We have Tides of Time playing Shikiro, A2000 playing Undying, Fogged on the Shadow Shaman, and Snaking playing the Stolen Spirit. I get the feeling Snaking is probably going to be their solo mid. We'll see where way too sexy goes, but it really comes down to where they want to stick. The Shikiro, Undying, and Shadow Shaman. Oops, still nothing there. Hopefully they get this sorted out in a second. We'll see who's picked what over here first. So, S4 has picked up the Templar Assassin. No surprise there. He's most likely going to be the solo mid. Aki is going to be playing Keeper of Light, so you should follow Aki on Twitter. As Admiral Bulldog will be playing their Suicide Solo. So, we get so far, fairly stocks and stuff, which leaves us with Loda, I believe, will be playing the Shrek. And Envy likely to be playing that Shakiro, I feel. Oh, not Shakiro. Who was their last? Wisp, sorry. Envy likely to be playing their Wisp. Of course, Loda is, generally speaking, their carry player. So I'm expecting... There we go. He will be playing the Lashrak. And Envy, well, that leaves him with Wisp and nothing else. There we go. We are good to rock and roll. Now, of course, Diditas is probably the statistical favorite here. But we'll see, of course, we'll see exactly how nasty No Titan can be, so we'll see what they've got up their sleeve here. Of 
Uh, 82,000. Okay, looks like they're going to go for a 4 or 5 man sweep of their own jungle here. Mostly just going to be a safety in numbers deal. This is mini rotation. Oh, nope, they've changed their mind. They'll be going for an offensive sweep here. And of course, this is mostly a safety in numbers thing as they all go together, or at least. No, okay, they've changed their mind again. Never mind. Snaking's just going to go his mid lane. The three heroes will break off into an offensive tri lane. And then we'll have Queen of Pain go to the top lane now. It looks like Bulldog will be in the suicide lane all alone. Meanwhile. Now, on the one hand, we do have the Tombstone, and we will have the Tombstone for this offensive lane. On the other hand, we will have an Illuminate up against it. Now, trying to push forward into an Illuminate is some problematic stuff, because, of course, Illuminate, even with a couple of levels, hits like an absolute truck. And then they're going to have to be very wary, because there's plenty of counter gank potential, plenty of stuns, and damage from Loda as well. Now, I think Loda may want to avoid... We'll see whether or not he wants to go with Edie, but the chances are he may not want to get that close to these three heroes. See, so a good couple of stuns here between... Uh, Shackles, Hex, and then of course the Ice Path, and you don't want to get locked down next to a Tombstone, that is definitely really painful stuff. So we might see some early levels in Lightning here from Loda. He may not go for the Edict, because it will just be a little bit too risky against that lineup. But we'll see what he's got planned. He has opened up with his stun, actually, Split Earth. Now, Bounty Hunter, okay. Cord was dumb. Probably pulled out his mic cord or something. Looks like the Radiant have thrown down an interesting ward here. Normally we see the offensive ward placed, or the defensive ward rather, placed up here to watch for trouble. But it looks like Keep Light has spotted his opponents, hits two of them with an early Illuminate, just beginning that harassment. And now he's going to clarity up. The battle begins. Of course, any damage that they take makes them less likely to dive and more defensive, which of course gives Lotus some room to farm. And it seems in this case they expected the Trilling vs. Trial, which might have been their reasoning for picking up. Oh, again, another Illuminate catching another two heroes. See this ward here just spotting them up. Annoying stuff. Now this may be the reasoning why they, instead of going for something like a tiny, they went, you know what, let's pick a ranged hero who can farm on a trial and mostly because they'd have to basically, even if you pick a hero like, uh, say, even they managed to get their hands on, say, a Sven or a tiny, the issue is, he gets his tron, he wouldn't be able to get too much farm. They've run into this situation before where they go up against an undying tri lane, and it just comes down to the fact that their melee hero, even if they have a tri lane support, presence, uh, they have a tri lane, defensive tri lane present, it's just they just cannot get close enough to farm. On the other hand, Lashrak, of course, he can see us with lightning if necessary, and at the same time, he can just hang a little bit further back. And it's going to be that much harder to catch him out, whereas, of course, if he came forward to see us as a melee hero, it will put him within range of disabling from Shadow Shaman. Or, easy, or even a really easy ice path from Jakura. I see Envy now getting harassed there by Jakura. But it will be Storm Spirit mid versus Templar Assassin. This is not going to be a particularly fair matchup there. As well, S4 walks in a way. Ouch into a rather painful nuke. On the other hand, given a couple levels here with the early side blades as well, Templar Assassin is going to become quite difficult for him to deal with. going to be able to harass a lot with the cleave or the spill damage, as well as the fact he has a fair amount of burst damage in that nuke, so she can avoid it with a well time refraction. As well as the fact, of course, the extra damage there from refraction is going to help him outlast hit snaking there, but we'll see exactly how well he does. Meanwhile, though, it will be solo. Bulldog with the uh, Bounty Hunter versus Queen of Pain, and this is going to be fairly easy for Queen of Pain to stay on top there. Of course, she has that nuke, plus, of course, a Shadow Strike harassment. And here we go, Digitas now going to try and jack that pull there. He's going to take some damage there from the Creep Wave. Tether up, though, from Wisp on Keep Light to allow them to speed away. No boots yet on the Undying, so unable to run them down. Even then, once they both get boots, of course, Tether is just going to give that little bit of an edge to walk away. We will need Shadow Shaman or Jakura to start landing some Disables for any kind of gang. And every time they go to do this, it's just giving Loda room to farm. And of course, there we go. He has gone with the Lightning. Two levels in Lightning. This is mostly because he doesn't want to get too close. And it allows him to see us at a distance as well. And of course, with Chakra, it's not like he's going to have very many issues there with mana either. I see Templar Assassin comes down to the room there. Bottles up a haste early on. Again, more Illuminate Harass being tossed out. And Aki... Just going to start spamming this non-stop. Of course, he wants to fire this, if at all possible, away from the creep wave, or when the creep wave is fairly low anyway, just to avoid pushing the lane too much. So you can see that whenever he does that, it does jack farm away from loader, as well as push the wave up against the tower. Although this may be okay with them, because they want to put a little bit of damage on the tower early on, but we'll see what they've got planned exactly. Bulldog now in the top lane, 11 and 4 there for Queen of Pain, whereas it looks like Storm Spirit struggling in this mid lane, having lost that bottom rune, he's had to get some clarities as well as a health potion there from Jikiro. Not a good sign at all, but of course, S4 is a brutal mid player, and on top of that, 
It's just not a fair matchup there. Snake King, there's not a lot he can do against this matchup. Of course, Templar Assassin is a much stronger hero, I believe, in this situation versus the Storm Spirit. Meanwhile, though, Bulldog only picking up 9 and 1. That said, it could be a lot worse. Queen of Pain, though, has got two levels in Shadow Strike now. She's really going to turn on the Pain, but now Aki in a bit of trouble here. Getting chased back. Wisp, is he going to tether up? It looks like A2000 is going to give chase here. He's got another He's got another decay coming in a second. There we go. Tether Stone going to allow him to escape. But he'll just cop a fair bit of damage there. Meanwhile, Loader just going to continue to CS in relative peace. Loader is up to 13 and 2. 14 and 2. He's definitely on track for that. 25 CS at 5 minutes, 50 at 10. This is definitely worrisome for the Inkatar. So offensive trial is not working out mostly because Loader can hang a lot further back. And on top of that, harassment here from Keeper Light is quite painful indeed. And every time they take damage like that, it's even if it's just on the support heroes. See Tides as well as Fog taking damage like this. It just makes him so much less likely to want to dive. This, uh oh. Tides down a bit of trouble. The tether up there from Wiss. Unable to land though. Here comes an Illuminate. Almost it does get him. Split Earth as well. But Wiss auto attack lands in time. Tombstone gets dropped down there. But it has little to no effect because Loader immediately backs up and has all but a single zombie chase him down. And this is what I mean about this distance. Now, had this been something like a Sven or a Tiny, they'd have to come close to participate there. And that would have given Fog the room to come in and then disable him. And of course, getting disabled near the zombies is painful stuff. Now we've got the shackles. This is he got a little bit too close to Chaos. Well, can he back off here? Loader though turns to fight. One more auto attack will finish him. They get the kill there on Rasta. And now Tether stunned there on A2000. He's going to try and take him down with the orbs. Although Jakira absorbing that damage. It's a toss down. Here comes the Illuminate. It's not going to do enough damage. Though. It is only level one, I believe. Yes, yeah, level one. Illuminate level two in the chakra. Unfortunately. Loader just got a little bit too ballsy there, but he is level 5 now. Undying also hitting level 5 as well, but you can see he's on his way to a level 6. As we see in the mid, S4 now trying to chase down Snake Eames. the tower beating down him. The tower still doing some critical damage here. Will S4 gun for this? He's got a Mel coming up. He should be able to walk away from this. And then we see the dodge there from the Mel. Just avoiding one tower hit there, not that it would have mattered. Templar Assassin will walk away with an early kill there on Snaking. Snaking, though, doing the best in a bad situation. Might have been able to pop another bottle charge, but in all honesty, that would have been a tight one either way. Meanwhile, top lane, 12 and 1 there for Bulldog. Queen of Pain, they're starting to get really get ahead. 26 and 12. I'll bring up the early gold chart here, currently in favor of the Radiant. Not by much, though. Experience as well, also in favor of the Radiant side. As we see the Tombstone get tossed down once again. Bit of a waste. That said, though, it does help him pick off a few creep, and on top of that, it does force Aki and uh, Atel Envy to back off from that pool, just allowing O2000 oh, to snipe that decay, being tossed down once again, just harass him. He does have his arcane boots, so at the very least, he can spam quite a bit. Now, Shadow Shaman, two levels in Ether Shock. Fairly normal stuff, as we see. What is Takira gone with? He's only level two so far. One in Dual Breath, one in the Ice Path. A cattle wall being tossed down there by the Dire Sign. It's looking for a ward mostly, but also spotting a bulldog if he tries to go in this just to back off. May not suspect that. Now Loda picking up his arcane boots with Tether. This is going to give them tons of mana regen in this lane. Going to let them spam, spam, spam non-stop. Now we've got Templar Assassin. Now it's going to the top lane. There we go. Meld hit there. Oh no, Snaking is on level 5. He's in a lot of trouble here. One more hit from the TA. We'll bring him down. However, Templar Assassin... Needs to run. She is being run down here by Queen of Pain. However, Queen of Pain, no boots. Templar Assassin walk away from this. She does have her phase boots completed. And it looks like no Tide Hunter. 5 to 1 at the moment on the kill board. They're doing quite well indeed. There's that harassment once again. Illuminate managing to just clip by 2000 See them pinging up there saying this might be something up there, but. S4 now, level 8. We'll see what the gold finish is at the moment. 378 there Radiance for Templar Assassin. She's last hitting extremely well, plus she's picked up 3 kills so far, no deaths in return. Now Queen of Pain has rotated to the mid instead. Oh, Loader. Still farming strong. Loader with the most CS at the moment, 39 to 5. And now it looks like, no, S4 changing his mind. Of course, Queen of Pain just able to blink away whenever she gets in trouble. Only one level in blink though. She has gone for maxing out Scream at level 8. Should be picking up a level. There we go, in her ultimate level 8. Going for the late ult. Of course, getting at level 6 if you're planning just to farm a lane isn't really productive. Might as well get the early extra level on the Scream. 
It's a pretty common build there for Queen of Pain to ignore her ultimate until she gets to about level 7, level 8, depending on how they want to build her, just because it is really, really costly. And if she's planning on not moving around and ganking until about level 9, level 10, it's not a big deal anyway. Now, Wist, though, going to tether up there on S4, and they might run for a kill here. In fact, Wist still only level 4, so it's going to use the extra movement speed there, but they might be gunning here for Storm Spirit. Still only level 5, definitely very vulnerable. I think he's realized exactly how vulnerable he is being tracked up there and backs off. And let's see the double damage there being popped by Templar Assassin. It's going to gun for this tower, going to absorb that damage. There's that meld hit there. Although it looks like Storm Spirit going to drag the tether into himself. Although it looks like they'll get a revenge kill there on West. However, I think he's quite happy to feed S4 yet another kill. And most importantly, delay that level 6 on Storm Spirit even further. Now, Storm Spirit being a solo mid hero, he wants to be hitting level 6 by around about 5.5 minutes. He's been delayed by an extra 3 minutes. This is crippling. Although another double damage meld there on Shakira and S4. Double damage, double kill. Away. Extra bang for your buck there. Now sneaking, snaking, teleports again to these mid. And it looks at like S4, he's going to gun for this again. He's still got time. On his double damage, he throws down a trap there. Doesn't find him though. But Snaking knows he has to back the hell down. So we see the tower get shielded up by the glyph. Snaking's going to try and sneak in a deny here. I think he needs to be very careful about this. Goes for it. Gets destroyed by the Radiant anyway. No deny. And S4 is all over the show here. You see a stun get tossed down there. One level of Edict for Loda now at level 8. It's gone for three in Split Earth, four in Lightning, and one in the Edict. You see a track up there on Queen of Pain. Meanwhile, Bulldog 19 and 2. I think that's fairly normal for the ladies up against. Queen of Pain's got a lot of harassment available. I see a Blink Dagger coming. I think that belongs to S4. Or well, not because it's going towards. Okay, maybe it's using the dire shop. I have no idea what they're doing with this courier at the moment. It's all over the show, but... Keep it light. Has picked up all of wards and boots. We see the arcanes there for the Shrek. In fact, with Wisp, he might even bother getting his own arcane there. Might just, in fact, try to speed up the mech. Radiant see, Wisp has completed a magic attack. wand there. As for, though, looking for a kill on the top lane. Now, the die, they would not have seen that coming. And it looks like the haste room. They're going to pick up a kill. The blink in the meld hit. Tether stun as well. And it looks like they can go for a double here. Although the tall zombies get tossed out here. As they are, in fact, going to go for a double. They miss with the squid earth. However, it doesn't matter. The haste room from S4 able to run this down. Snakey has finally hit level 6. At the very least, can escape them. And Wisp. Where is Wisp gone? Wisp has managed to tether over to Aki there. Queen of Pain not going to be able to run him down. Lauren Zombie getting picked off there. And in fact, they're going to look for another kill. Potentially, though, two blinkers here, or pseudo blinkers. Not too easy to get run down there. Split Earth misses. Illuminate going to come through here. Not going to hit anything. It's a lone creep. Meanwhile, top lane. Wisp now is coming. Toppy tracks him up. Here we go. Lots of extra money here. And the blink forward again with that tether stun. Great stuff there. Wisp being the force multiplier. No Tide Hunter need in this early game. Illuminate there, and Wisp has come back again with that tether stun. They were waiting for him, but a great escape there. Aki sitting in position, not only charging up an Illuminate, but they might have been gunned for a kill again. Not going to happen, though. These guys are a little bit too maneuverable. Now, I am a little... Now, I would be worried, because these guys still don't have really any instantaneous stuns they can really count on to shut down Storm Spirit or Queen of Pain. But at the same time... The biggest fear that I had, Storm Spirit getting farmed up and completely overrunning them, has been pretty much alleviated because S4 has, well, with the help of Wisp, completely trashed him up until about the 11 to 12 minute mark. This is definitely worrisome stuff here for Dignitas, and it may, looks like they're going to have to really work hard in game 2 because this is looking troublesome for them. At the moment, looking at about a 6k gold lead here for the Radiant side, experience-wise as well. Right about 6k. Now, the thing that worries me the most is the fact they went for this defensive try and it just hasn't done anything. I keep saying this. When you run an offensive try and it has to cause all sorts of havoc for the enemy carry. But in this case, that's completely backfired. Sure, they didn't give away that many kills and they picked off an early kill on Loader. But the main thing is Loader has farm. He's picked up 65 and 6 so far. They haven't disrupted his last hitting. And that's the thing with the defensive try and what it's meant to do. It's not so much get kills. It doesn't have to get kills. It has to stop this guy from farming. Getting kills is definitely a good sign, and getting a lot of them and getting three or four kills is definitely a really good sign, but if you don't stop that hard carry from farming, it is really, or well, semi-carry in this case from farming, it's a really bad sign. In this case, Loda getting a lot of cash, 3k in the bank, and he's already picked up his arcanes. He could, in fact, just go straight for a bloodstone. We'll see what he's got in plan. We'll see what he's got in mind for his first item, but now an Illuminate going to come through and hit Snaking in the face, probably. Oh, just stopping short. Snaking playing chicken with that. 
And it looks like Tides is going to try and uh, stack Easy Camp here and just catch up in any way he possibly can. Templar Assassin, though, Blinky Force goes for the stun, and Storm Spirit gets caught with his pants down. And another gank coming up here. They're going to go after Queen of Pain. She blinks away, though. They won't be able to run her down. They are just going to pick off the Raster Ward, so possibly just slot into Deny as well. Should be able to pick this up. There we go. Templar Assassin picking up a Deny. Whisk copying a bit of damage here. As Loda does get picked off in the middle of that, though, to neutral creeps. Yes, Loda managing to kill himself to this hard camp here. Getting smacked down, unfortunately. Bottom tower is under attack. Apparently the other quadrupeds not having a really uh really looking too brightly upon his attempts to kill them. Meanwhile, so Bulldog is possibly picking up I'm actually not sure where he's going. Actually, he could be going for an early... I think that could actually be a Vlad's. And it's mostly just to help out with the pull, as well as the damage aura, uh, the push, as well as the damage aura is also really, really nice. Undying, though, just going to be farming up whatever camp he can there, of course. So I'm going to bring up the net world. Well, Gold minute here, 360 there for Lotus. So definitely Lotus having a decent amount of farm for the early game. But of course, the main winner here is S4. S4 has been absolutely crushing everybody he comes up against. And the question is whether or not he will go for a BKB first, or if he'll really... Or if he'll decide to play a little bit riskily, and we'll go with the Stygian Desolator first. We'll see what he decides to turn this Mithril Hammer into. So he finds an Illusion Rune there. There we go, net worth, nearly 8,000 gold there, there's a blink forward again, looks like Rasta though gets a hex down now, there's a teleport coming, shackles as well, double pawns coming, S4 now getting caught up by Ice Path as well, as well as a dual breath, getting it slowed down there, and it takes all four of those heroes, plus a fifth, there's <laughs> Envy, not impressed by that, not impressed by that, but they bring her down eventually with the help, combined help of five heroes, and now Envy of course teleported out, and unfortunately comes back into that. So unfortunately, a double kill being fed to them there. But it looks like the counter push is on now, and only one hero responding will be the Undying. The Glyph also being popped there. Loda deciding to back up. Loda will be going for the Bloodstone first. And of course, he's probably going to break... In fact, a very common build there for Latrak is to break down the Arcane Boots rather than keeping them and then building the Bloodstone on top of that. Because once he gets the Bloodstone, he doesn't really need the Arcanes all that badly. And of course, they're going to have Chakra as well. So that means he can late game. This opens up the Boots to travels, or he can even go for treads, or even phase, I mean, all those boots really work on the Lashrak. Phase definitely really nice for positioning during the middle of a team fight, or trying to run down somebody with your Edict. And there we go, he's bringing it out now. In fact, 300 gold away from uh, getting his Bloodstone there. Yep, 300 gold away, he hasn't picked it up yet. It's going to pick up the Ring of Health as one. A lot of people forget that once you combine these things, it gives passive regeneration. You see they have 4 health as well as 100% mana regen. So it's come to the point where Loda doesn't really need that burst. He's more looking for sustained regeneration. And Bounty Hunter, he did indeed go for Vladimir's offering first. Has also bottled up an Illusion Rune there. Now, S4 still sitting on around about 2,000 gold. Hasn't decided where he wants to go with that. Snaking, has he? Still working on his treads. Oh, this is painful. Storm Spirit really needs his levels, really needs his money, and he's been delayed so hard. So it looks like this is possibly why we don't see a lot of Storm Spirit anymore, because their Batrider and Templar Assassin is so prevalent in the mid. And those two heroes really, really just crush Storm Spirit in a solo situation. Assassin though, and it looks like he's going for that Desolator first. He's decided to uh, go all in basically and really play it riskily. Of course, as you can tell, it's something that can get shut down as we saw. Once you get those disabled stacked, it can be really difficult. But of course, he's really relying on his team to kind of take the focus off. And that S4 going to get harassed there by the Shadow Strike, but in the end, she's just going to blink away and disjoint that. Now we also have Fog though coming top along with Tides of Time. They're going to try and set up a gank here and it looks like S4 knows they're coming. They've walked over his Sonic Trap. He knows trouble's coming and he's just going to back off there. And there we go. The Desolator is done as well. Just throwing down the Sonic Trap to scout things out. It's now people aren't actually summoning him to the bottom lane. They might actually just try and jump on top of Undying. Although Undying backing up realizing he's outmatched. 
And Lotus is going to push forward here. I'm going to pop that edict and bring down this tower. We've got an easy tower down there for them. Now we've also got Wisp here as well. Now Wisp has actually gone for the mech instead. Of course, mech on the Wisp definitely helps out with the survivability. Wisp also really combos nicely with the tether. And there we go. Keeper Light has decided to go for the Tranquil Boots. In fact, we might even see Wisp grab Tranquils in a minute as well. Not as just give him some nice armor, but on top of that... The health gain, again, really useful for that tether. Looks like they're going to go for an early Roshan attempt, and with the Vlads, as well as the fact the Meld, it's going to allow them to chew through. And of course, the Death Slater as well, the negative armor, of course, is one of the fastest ways to cut down a Roshan's health ball. Or just beat him down, basically. It's just to stack that neg armor on him. In fact, when Lycan was popular, early Medallion, of course, allowing teams to just absolutely decimate Lycan, uh, decimate the Roshan. A bit of a counter push here from Queen of Pain, although not getting far, though. Paul going to come in here from Loda, and Loda going to force her to back off. Let's see Templar Assassin, though, finding herself in Invisibility Room. Just going to stalk. Oh, Fogged does not realize what trouble he's sitting on. It looks like he's going to back up in time, but Templar Assassin may well just gun for him there. She's just going to scout things out. Jakiro is here now as well. I don't know if she's seen that just yet. And there we go, they get the tether stun, and there's a melt hit as well. Ice Path gets tossed out. Now Wisp could try and finish this with an orb, but they're all gonna run into fog there, as we see also see the soul rip used and the blinding light. Now S4 jumps forward, picks off Jakura eventually with the blink there, just finishing him off. Manages to disengage successfully there as well. Now that we've got push on mid-edict being used to shoot through this tower, the slow being tossed down there is only gonna find snaking though. Decides not to pop it. And No Titan just decimating these creep waves. Currently a 10k gold lead there for No Titan to, along with, oops, we're at about a 7.5k experience lead. Dignitas, they are definitely going to have to come up with some crazy plays. The issue is, they have no map control, so they don't have any wards up. And on top of that, if they try to, they won't, I mean, they could try and go for a smoke gank, but they've always got to worry about walking into a bounty hunter. It's really problematic stuff for them right now. And of course, if they split up and try and farm different lanes all at once, it's so easy to get picked off by this wisp. I mean, at this point in time, really, the only option they have is to try and force a team fight. I mean, they've got big nukes, at the very least. They've got the level 4 tombstone, they've got the ult there for Queen of Pain. They could try, they're going to have to try, I mean, I think the only thing they have up their sleeve right now is just to, to try and force 5v5s. They really can't split push, they can't farm their own jungle, they've lost control of the map. I think just 5v5s right now and trying to get some town downs really is the only option they have. Because right now, if they split up like this, or in fact, it looks like S4s getting a little bit too aggressive here. That said, they could also just sit around and wait for S4 to suicide at them and give them some money. That's also a possibility. But right now, they're going to try and find a way to make the best of a bad situation. But here we go. They're going to wait for no time to push in. And maybe they can force some 5v5s around these towers. They might have a good shot at this. Now we've got Snaking trying to pick off S4. S4 going to do some damage. So the slow gets tossed down. Snaking going to have to jump out there. There we go. He will dodge away there. But it's going to chew up his mana pool. Doesn't quite get picked off. Loaded now charging board. Another slow toss down and undying. The tower gets cleaned up fairly easily. And again, these illuminates just causing all sorts of havoc. This tower, an easy kill for them. I think Snaking was waiting a little bit too long before he jumps out. But they didn't commit the wards just yet. I think they were happy to let that one go. They're just going to try and wait for these 5v5s to get forced up their ramp. But in all honesty, I think S4 is just going to, well basically no time they're just going to focus on trying to scramble them out of this match rather than trying to dive too much, too much up these ramps into zombie towers, as well as of course big disables and big nukes. In fact, they might just wait until they have a couple of, they might just wait until Templar Assassin and Lashrak get BKBs, because I mean, you see Loda there, is on well on his way to a BKB, only 1500 gold away from that. And of course, a BKB likely to be Templar Assassin's next item, she also has 2.1k in the bank on top of that. But they can afford, no time they can afford just to get a gem, just get rid of all these, or just counter wards, and just get rid of all of the map control that Dignitas can hope to put down, and just keep them locked up in the base. And if they're locked up in the base, they're not farming efficiently. And this will just allow Lashrak, as well as the Templar Assassin, just to spiral out of control. There's not much they can do about it. And I think that's probably a better option than trying to fight uphill, because of course, if you're fighting uphill, it's really just playing into Dignitas' hands. Dignitas have some decent teamfight potential. They've got the Macro Fire, the Zombie Tower. Of course, Undying just amplifies a lot of damage early on. Of course, Queen of Pain, plenty of nukes. And inside the base, there's plenty of room for Sneaking to jump in and out of the fountain. Just to heal up every now and then, get his mana back, so... 
they don't really have a lot of reason to come outside if they don't have to. But in this situation, by strangling them, it's forced them to come out and try and find some farm outside. As you see there, they're moving out. They're going to try and get a pick off here. The dust gets popped down as well by the dust. The counter gank is coming. They're going to try and pick somebody off in return. They lose Bulldog, but they will pick off Queen of Pain. So it looks like the dire side have picked up Necromic and Queen of Pain has managed to find a level 3 Necro book. I don't know if this is going to do enough firepower for them though. And a buyback there from Bulldog, then immediately going to be teleported back into the fight there by Aki. This is definitely a possibility, and they're trading Bulldog, of course, with a buyback there. That's going to nuke down this mid wave here and just put some damage to the tower. Probably even take out this tower. Look at that meld hit, though. Completely decimating the untimed macro pie gets thrown down. Hitting a fair bit of load. In fact, Loaded is walking right through. It doesn't even care. Loaded now copy a lot of nukes. Need to be careful. They're loaded going in balls deep. He's going to charge straight in. He has the Aegis, though. Going to pop back up. Queen of Pain bought back. Jumps back to the fight. Illuminate goes through there. Queen of Pain now trying to back up. Has been tracked up. But they will manage to pick off Storm Spirit. Storm Spirit buys back. Undying is down. Raster is down. Temple Assassin also taking out. Lotus still in this fight. They get the ice part down there. No, it doesn't land. And it looks like they'll pick off Storm Spirit eventually. Although Lashrak. Lashrak is down as well. However, with the Bloodstone, he will be back up in a short space of time. But at the very least, Dignitas, they managed to hold. And this is what I mean. These sorts of fights. They can hold here. They have the better team fight potential with the Wards, Queen of Pain, the Macropires, all that business. Although, to be honest, to be honest, I really don't think uh, they needed to go in quite that hard. Lashrak kind of walked headfirst into a Macropire and kind of sat in it for no good reason. They could have just walked back, let the Macropire expire, even let the two and then come back in again. They were really just waiting. They were trying to gun in for Queen of Pain, like while she was down. Unfortunately, she just bought back anyway, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Queen of Pain just bought back in the middle of the fight, and that just kind of ruined that for them. I see why no Tidehunter, they gunned for it, but in reality, they probably should have just held back. That said, they did force out a couple of buybacks from Dignitas. Queen of Pain burning hers, as well as Storm Spirit also throwing down his own buyback. Like, did anybody else buy back in the middle of that? No. I'm dying. No, also. And Jakira, probably not. Jakira's actually gone for an early Vladimir's offering. Interesting. So see Bulldog busy picking himself up a BKB as well. This is what I mean. They could just sit back and wait for these BKBs. There's no real reason to have to gun for this as it looks like no Tidehunter also picking up a pipe. I just noticed Aki there picking up a bunch of items for his Hood of Defiance. Likely to get turned into a pipe to tell about it. I mean, this is the kind of things they can wait for. BKBs, pipe, that sort of stuff. Then they can push in. They have complete map dominance right now and they can just focus on doing it if they're playing safe. It looks like no Tidehunter. They want to have a bit of action here. And a BKB there finished up for Templar Assassin as well. No Tide Hunter. What have they picked up? Aki still hasn't brought his items out. Wisp, though, also has picked up Drums. Meanwhile, Dire Side. What have they got? Anything new? A gem there on A2000. I think it's mostly just. At the very least, if they can't get map if they can't get map control with wards, at the very least they can deny the enemy that control. So at the very least, they can walk into the jungle as a group and not get instantly spot up. Also, it's going to help pick out the bounty hunter if they're being scattered out, so they can move as a group and try and fight as a group. Because like we said, they do have that good team fight potential. And Wisp, um, for no good reason, just sitting there with his over. I don't know why he's doing that, but he just is. He says, you know what? Why not? Just turning on his overcharge because he can. Mech getting popped up now as well. He was just trying to have an excuse there to pop his mech. And Shakira now also picking up Tranquil Boots. Of course, going to give him a little bit of armor. Well, that said, against Track as well as Mel, not going to give him enough. Undying. Nothing particularly new there. Raster also feeling quite strapped for cash there. It's in net value though. Die side falling definitely behind there as we see Loader also trying to pick up an Arganims now. Queen of Pain on the other hand, 1300 in the bank. And I think we might even see now. I've got to say, Dignitas, they have got to make a tough call here. They've got to decide, do we save, for, they've got to decide with Queen of Pain, do we decide to say save for buyback to those desperate team battles that we've been having? at our racks, or do I actually buy up and try and get some items and try to win these fights in the first case? And we'll see what she's got planned here. Looks like she might just save for buybacks for a bit. Although that said, she might be looking for a hex next, we'll see. 
course, she's going for a hex next, and she's um, got to save cash anyway. She needs that. We'll see whether or not she goes for that ultimate orb. She's going for. She picks up an ultimate orb next, and we'll probably have a good idea that she's going for the hex. Otherwise, if she doesn't pick anything up, then we'll probably guess that she is just going to be saving for buybacks. Now, Queen of Pain. How much time? Yeah, she's only got 27 seconds left on the buyback. She's just going to counter push this lane. Loader though has noticed and comes down to water off. Just going to take that farm there as well. Now it looks like no time. They're just going to pull back. In fact, they might even wait for this. In fact, they might just grab Roshan here and then go in again. We'll see whether or not they decide to keep it light. He's going to be summoning in a Loader in a second, I think. See Stormsbird jumping away there as he gets threatened by S4. Blinking Bordu. Chase him off. And there we go. They're going to try and pick off Roshan once again. And when I say try, I mean will. Getting to the stage with Templar Assassin, you're pretty much solo him. Illuminate toss through there, just warding them off. Potentially, though, there is nobody actually up here doing anything. They're all backed off towards their base. But again, a fairly easy Roshan attempt. Now, Lashrak, probably going to pick this up in a second. He's got a spot for it there. Or not, they'll give it to Templar Assassin. I thought Lashrak was going to drop his circlet. Uh, and then picked it up, but how they give it to TA instead, which is fair enough, she does do a lot of damage right now. As you can see, he hits really, really hard. And of course, if Loda dies, although in this case, just never, if Loda dies in this case, all they've got to do is, well, he won't be that long. Like, it won't be that long for him to come back, especially picks up a couple of kills. Now, they're going to go for Queen of Pain here, she will blink away, but like I said, Loda will be up in a very short amount of time because of that Bloodstone, and they can just summon him back in there with Keeper of Light. The question is whether or not he could pick up enough charges. We saw with 10 charges, with 10 charges, he came back in the space of about 20 seconds. I think it was actually less. I think it was 17 seconds he came back in. Now snaking, continuing, trying to continue to find some farm. Is going for a BKB here. He's going to try and ward off some of those disables because he's been getting shut down by the blink tether there from Wisp as well as Templar Assassin. Now it looks like no Titan are going to gump this. Now they've got the pipe as well. Macro pie, not going to do enough damage here. It's only going to hit a few creeps. Actually, no, Bounty Hunter gets caught inside it. That will actually really cripple him, but now we've got Rasi getting slowed down. Three-shotted there, gets his wards off at the very least, but they may turn into free food there for Latrak. They get the tower down. Illuminate comes through, loaded now, copy a lot of damage. BKB's up, charges forwards. Going to go in there, going to pop that last will there. Although it looks like it's going to bounce off the BKB and not do too much damage. It is copying a little bit of damage there from the wards. It will back up. How the wards are a little bit too far back to participate any further. And now S4. Gonna move up here, and actually, no bulldog gonna cop some damage on top of that. Now the, uh, the track's being tossed down there, chased by A2000. Another teleport coming in here. Who is it? It's gonna pop in just down. Takiro in the middle of this fight, getting hit by the crit there. They will pick up Templar Sash. He's coming back in a second. They pick up Takiro again, and it looks like he doesn't have any cash to buy back either. Mid Rax goes down, and this looks to be a fairly easy Rax attempt here. For no Tide Hunter, they have had to burn the Ragus. On the other hand, though, no real serious issues. A hex down there on top. I'm not sure. Did. Nope, that's a creep. They managed to hex a creep. It's a bit of a mess. Click down. S4 getting dragged back in by the electric vortex. S4 not really caring though. Lashrak also charging forwards. Can they get a stun down on Queen of Pain? Yes, they can. Split Earth as well. They should be able to pick her off. Yes, they do. Lashrak still going. Gonna go up by 2000 With juking away there. They'll also pick him off. The Storms are at snaking getting drilled again. And there's the GG. Dignitas know it's over. And I think no time hunter. They had complete control of this map. They've won the mid lane. They could have successfully counter the offensive tri lane, and really, the only lane they succeeded in was Queen of Pain's solo top lane, but she wasn't able to exert enough pressure in the mid game to really turn things around at all. The mid game turned into Blink, Templar Assassin, plus the West, causing all sorts of havoc, and with a thrown in with a little bit of Bounty Hunter for good measure, because track gold is always delicious for any ganking lineup. And again, you know what? You know, Wisp had none of his usual partners, and again, we see exactly how devastating he can be. He's just a fantastic force multiplier. Without a doubt, one of the nastiest heroes in the game right now, in the right hands. However, we will be going into game two. Remember, that was just game one to best of three. Now, we'll be taking a five minute break after this match, and they'll be jumping into game number two Dignitas versus No Tide Hunter. Dignitas need to win this one to try and extend the series to a third game. Otherwise, no time will be crowned victorious yet again. And of course, since coming to this league, won pretty much every single game we've thrown at them. However, guys, stay tuned. We've got game number two coming up. Dignitas versus No Tide.